would like to continue to share some things that I have uncovered in Antarctica today. This area known as the Antarctic Peninsula, nearest to Argentina, we've also referred to it as the 12 o'clock region, if you were looking at the entire continent as if it were a clock. I'd made the allegation before that it looks like there was some type of, of an event in the past where water from the Pacific side uh, broke through and rushed into the Atlantic side for whatever reason. Um, there was an article about a week ago that came out that confirmed this area here known as Deception Island was the site of a massive volcanic blast uh, three to 5,000 years ago. And that, of course, could have been the catalyst, even if you made the allegation that all water is exactly level, which it isn't all the time. Um, the floor of the ocean could have collapsed just enough to cause a difference from one side to the other. And as we know, once water starts moving, it's going to eventually level itself out at some point, and do whatever it needs to do to do that. These cable and tunnel structures are actually evidence of that. Everywhere else in Antarctica, other than up here in the peninsula, they all run directly 180 to 0 degrees or 90 to 270. This particular area here put to rest the notion that they were some issue of satellite photography. In this region here, we have six different structures, exactly one league apart, three nautical miles, um, that connected two others. And I don't know any modern system that uses nautical miles or leagues to measure things out, especially not satellites. But up here, what makes me think that there was some massive cataclysmic event that moved this peninsula here is that in this region, all of the tunnel and cable structures that I have found, for lack of a better term, are off 5 degrees. Instead of running from 90 degrees to 270, they run from 85 degrees to 265 or 95 to 275, however you want to look at it. And that's been something that's been repeatable. I actually found one recently that um, confirms this here. And strangely enough... It lines perfectly up with this jeweled mountainside, for lack of a better way to describe it. It's off on an island, and when you zoom in very closely, you can see that there is just all of these uh, purple and teal and yellow and red and green and every color you could imagine on this mountainside. We always see these structures, they correlate with other structures. And this particular one looks like it actually goes underneath this waterway. And of course, I'll give you the locations for all of this, the coordinates, so you can find it for yourself on Google Earth Pro. This is still the 2012 layer. I found quite a few pyramids lately, and I'm not sure exactly why. This one comes out in high res very well. It's out, out here by itself. One of the things that's unique about the pyramids in Antarctica versus pyramids everywhere else in the world, is these are three-sided. And when you look at the very, very top of this one, there is clearly something parked on the top of it. This isn't a rock. It's not... Uh, I've looked at it from just about every angle I can. And whatever it is, it's not natural, sitting on top of this. Here's another great example of one just out in the middle of nowhere, just like we see in Egypt and everywhere else in the world. You see this perfectly straight edge. This one actually shows um, almost a resemblance to a stepped pyramid, like we see in South America, like Chichen Itza, and you can actually see it in the shadow, that there are steps to this one. And you can almost, you don't even have to look at the shadow, you can physically see it here that this is not something that is just nature. It's too straight of a line. And real quick, we'll do a distance on this just to give you an idea of how, <clears throat> pardon me, how long this is. We'll do this in, uh, in meters. 
This is about 178 meters long. I'm going to zoom that in to make it a little easier for you to see. So 200 meters long. I mean, it's nearly a football field, perfectly straight. Over here in this region, there's actually a low-res pyramid. And even without the... Uh, the high resolution, you can very clearly see that this was a pyramid. You can see the perfect triangle. I mean, mountains just don't do this. And once again, we see something going on on the side here. Looks like entries, perhaps, or something else. Who knows? We'll zoom in a little closer. It doesn't really help much. This one's, for some reason, I can't get this one to uncover in any layer in high res. But I, of course, will give you the location. You can go look for yourself over here. Um, it's a lot more faint, but you can kind of see the same structures. These two cable tunnel structures actually are very unique in the sense that I've seen cable and tunnel structures that met up with other ones, but this one actually crosses. And, of course, the, the colored lines are my reference lines. But you can see one faintly here and then one darker here. And the other thing about these is that they almost exclusively begin and end in multiples of a league, meaning they're uh, 6 nautical miles, they are 18 nautical miles, they're 36 nautical miles. Whoever was doing this, whatever these are, they were being done during a time when that was a common uh, unit of measurement. Out here there was an island. And I know we're spun around looking south here. Let me uh, fix the... There we go. Out here on this island, you can see this. The best way to see this, I actually should have left it, um, is on a easterly aspect. And you can see this one from a huge distance above. I mean, it's very clear what this is. The sides are just too smooth. It's too perfect. It's literally visible from, I mean, far, far above. We're looking at it now from 5,000 feet. You could see this from a Cessna. So they are all over the place down here, and I think with so many of them, it's pretty hard to make any kind of an allegation that this is just tricks of photography, tricks of light, um, just mountains. Very, very, very odd. And we'll show this. I know we've shown this before, but we'll show, us, show it again. I don't know how, when you look at something like this, I'm actually in the wrong layer. There we go. that you see anything other than a massive obelisk. And there has been some, the reason I brought this up is we can only see about 80 feet of it from the visible point here to the top is about 88 feet. This thing could be much, much, much taller. It's sitting down in a valley. And one of the things that I forgot to talk about when I first discovered it was when you look at this, you can see that this is being visited because in every direction you see what looks like trails. You look, you see very disturbed snow. Like out here you see the, the snow is very smooth and undisturbed. Well, if you go to this obelisk and you look directly this direction, you see what look like tracks and trails and disturbed snow. You see it in this direction as well, and you see it down this direction as well. The vast portion, I do believe, of this obelisk is hidden from view. We can only see about 80 feet of it. I think it's probably four times that big. At least. It's just an artifact of the photography that we can't um, 
move around on it. I don't think it was meant to be shown to anybody, to be truthful, and that this is a factor of melt. This is something that is, uh, and you can even see a fourth over here. If you look closely, you can see here that there's very clearly a trail that leads right down to it, right down to the base of it. And of course, what it's setting in is triangular shaped. We see this over and over again. You can see the trail that leads out here, one that goes this direction, and one that leads out this direction as well and comes down here. And you can see how the snow is very, very disturbed. And there's a walkway. You can follow this all the way down. So I don't think this is a secret. I think this has probably been discovered. So I know everyone has their own opinions on it. Um, but even looking at it from far above, when you look at the evidence of the mining right here and the tracks over here, I think this is something that people have discovered something underneath this mountain, this whatever you want to call it here. And this is just a small piece of evidence. And also, one more thing on that uh, the ship that we had found that I had thought was just a platform. And let me see if I can find it again. Sometimes you, you find so many things and you lose track of where they are. Here it is. When you spin the aspect of this around, and you look at this as the bow of a ship, and this might down here be where the um, the bulbous bow, so to speak, was, this does look suspiciously um, like an older submarine model. A couple of people had mentioned that, and it really does. It absolutely does. It looks like it's just part of it. Um, there's clearly a crack right here. You know, what could be underneath here? Who knows? But if you really think about it, when you see the disturbances up here, if you can think of the bridge of a large ship, you know, the distances would be exactly right. And there's some other disturbance over here with this. And the way the wind would has blown around this, I don't know how anybody can look at this and say, well, this is just a natural piece of rock. I just can't imagine how you could ever make that allegation. And once again, what we see here is there looks like there is some kind of a track or a trail that leads out of there. And when you follow it around, once again, we find what looks like an opening to a cave. So... Just very, very strange the way this uh, the snow here has decided to shape itself for its own re for its own purposes. It's uh, some people made the allegation that maybe when ships disappear out of the uh, Bermuda Triangle or the Devil's Triangle, maybe they somehow get transported here. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's a very strange thing when you're talking about a society this old, the advancements they could have had. It's uh, a lot to talk about, but I don't think anyone can really make the allegation that what we're looking at here is just tricks of photography. There's just too much of it now. So I guess we'll leave it there. Um, if there's any particular thing that I've covered that I forget to leave the coordinates to, please ask. Um, sometimes I get busy doing things and I forget to put one or two things in the description. So you guys have a great week and we will talk to you next time. Thank you.